in the 80s when all the fucking metal bands were, you know, wearing spandex. Was there any pressure on you from management, from Metallica to be more commercially successful by like, you know, wearing like, like long, like, I don't know, robes or you, you know what I mean? Like, well, how did you avoid that pressure? Our managers were uh, looking after Dawkin, remember them? Yeah. Dawkin, and we were the antithesis to that. We were the opposite, and they were actually fiercely protective of us. We started in L.A., so it's 1981. We're starting to play a few shows up in Hollywood, and everything that was playing up on Sunset Boulevard at, you know, the Whiskey and the Troubadour and Gazaris and all those were all those bands that had that image, and it fueled us. It made us want to be the opposite to that, and all those other bands, that was just... That was the uh, the enemy, the opposition. That was who stood in our way. When you talk about the fueling, see, this is something I relate to. When I got into my radio career, I was an angry motherfucker. As far as I was concerned, everyone else on the radio was bullshit. This was my attitude. Have you ever gone back and had to apologize to other bands that you worked with on tour because you guys were angry and pissed off? I know that anger. You have to have it if you're going to succeed. It's, it's, you've got to. Have you, yes. have you, you have. There's been well, a couple, yeah, of, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, couple of incidents. But there was a lot of bands that, you know, were talking crap about us, you know, right. which actually helped us in a way too, you know, and then we'd actually end up touring with some of those bands like, you know, Motley Crue <laughs> yeah, or no, something there a- in there. Oh, uh, I'm sorry about what I said in that, uh, yeah. that Cream Magazine interview. It's like, <laughs> oh, well, thank you. I didn't read it, but thank you. <laughs> we, we, had a, we had a tour book. I think it was on the Black Album tour. We found every single fucking negative, nasty quote that anybody had ever said about Metallica. And there was a lot of them. And we put them all in that tour book. And some of them were me. <laughs> and it was just kind of the way that we would just get kind of back at these people. You know, in the Nothing Else Matters video... We had a dartboard, and there's a clip in that video where I'm throwing darts at a picture of Kip Winger. Remember Kip Winger? Yeah, Kip oh, Winger, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and listen, no. still to this day, I, I feel like a, a, I apologize to, you know, whenever it's brought up in interviews. It's like a, it was nothing against Kip Winger personally, but uh, kind of like what yeah. you're saying, it, it 35 years later, it feels awkward to sit and talk about that, but you can't deny that when you're 18 and full, full of spunk and venom and, and just wanted to fuck the whole world, you know? It does drive you. It does drive you, and and and, and it, 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 it's, it's an incredible drive, you know? Well, I love what you're saying, Howard, because it's true that I, should I have been that way? Should I have been different? No, it happened because it happened, and it had to happen to get where we are right now to respect the past and to respect our enemy and all of the things that fueled us and brought us to where we are now. And, you know, uh, as you might know, you know, the first half of your life is causing destruction and the second half of your life is maybe cleaning a bit of it up. You know? Right. Apologizing for it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> 